There is a lot of misinformation spreading around concerning movement in Minecraft, and all of it seems to originate from a single video made by Dream in October of 2019, in which he suggests that a six block jump might be possible given enough momentum. As of today, that video has amassed almost 5 million views, and I realize I'm a bit late to the party, the damage has already been done after all, but I thought it would be a good opportunity nonetheless to explain how movement works and prove once and for all that a six block jump is impossible without any gimmicks. To set things clear, we are not considering any of the following mechanics. No ice or slime blocks, no damage boost and no potion effects. We're also excluding any kinds of glitches. Every tick, the player is affected by gravity, which makes him accelerate downwards, and drag, which simulates air resistance. If a player is on ground and starts jumping, they will gain some upwards acceleration. Now, I will present the formula for vertical movement. On the first tick, which is the one the player starts jumping on, Vy is equal to 0.42. On any subsequent tick, Vy is equal to its previous value, minus the constant of gravity, 0.08, and all multiplied by 0.98. In mathematical terms, this is called a recursive sequence, where the value of a term depends on the previous terms. What we can do with this formula is simulate the player's vertical motion over the course of a jump. In this table, we have the player's vertical speed and relative height at any given tick. Notice that on tick number 12, y would be below ground level, at minus 0.324. If the player were jumping on flat ground, they would be landing on that tick. This means that a jump on flat ground lasts a total of 12 ticks from start to finish. Every tick, the player's horizontal velocity and position gets updated in this sequence of events. First, acceleration is added to the player's velocity. Then, the player is moved. The new position is equal to the previous position plus the velocity, unless there is a collision. Finally, velocity is reduced to simulate drag. For the purpose of this video, and for the sake of simplicity, we'll assume that the player is moving in a single direction, let's say north, facing zero degrees. In that sense, we consider velocity as a single component instead of a 2D vector, which I label VH. The formula for VH is a bit more complicated than vertical speed, so bear with me. The general idea is to apply drag to the previous speed and add some acceleration. Drag is equal to 0.91, multiplied by 0.6 if a player was on ground on the previous tick. Acceleration depends on the player's inputs. Its base value is 0.1 on ground, or 0.02 when airborne. If a player is sprinting, it is multiplied by 1.3. If a player is not strafing diagonally, it is multiplied by 0.98. Finally, if a player is sprint jumping, acceleration is increased by 0.2, but the player should be facing forward. Overall, the most efficient method to gain speed is to sprint jump as often as possible. In tool-assisted demonstrations, this technique can be coupled with 45 strafes to gain slightly more speed. Going back to the formula, it might be more helpful to show how VH is calculated over the course of a jump. Initially, the player has some amount of speed x, at this point, we haven't started jumping yet, so their relative height is at zero. It is assumed that the player was previously airborne. The next 11 ticks are calculated as so. Given these expressions, we can calculate the player's jump distance as the sum of vh over 12 ticks. Note that every turn depends on x, the initial speed. Therefore, verifying a jump is simply a matter of finding the minimum value for x.
Now that we're done with a theory, we can study a practical example with a jump that we know to be possible. The 5 block jump. First, we need to get something out of the way. This jump isn't actually 5 meters long. This is because we have to account for the player's hitbox, which is 0.6 meters wide. This means we have to subtract 0.6 from the visual distance to get a physical distance of 4.4 meters. Let's analyze this problem with a spreadsheet. Here is a basic frame of our study. We have horizontal speed, vertical speed and height calculated over the course of a jump on flat ground. At the end, I have indicated the resulting jump distance given in both meters and blocks. Highlighted in yellow is the initial speed, which is the only variable in our problem. Currently, with no speed, I would be able to jump 2.646 meters, which is only a bit over 3 blocks. I can change this variable to see how much jump distance I would get. For example, with 0.15, the player would be able to make a 4 block jump. This is a graph showing jump distance relative to initial speed. What we want to find is the minimal speed required to jump 4.4 meters. We can quickly approximate the solution to be about 0.33. To get a more precise result, we can go back to the spreadsheet and calculate the solution manually. And so, the minimal required speed to do a 5 block jump turns out to be 0.3323. The next step is to find a momentum that would allow the player to gain at least that much speed. First, let's give a look at the simplest of setups, flat momentum. On flat ground, the jump cycle is 12 ticks. This time, we're trying to find the most speed you can get on flat momentum. To do that, I have this button called next jump, and what it does is take the current speed and apply a full sprint jump cycle to it. Under that, I also have a number of sprint jumps used. Currently, speed is at zero, but that will change when I press the button. Now, with just one sprint jump, I have a speed of 0.2561. One more jump, and we're at 0.3057. Now, I'm going to click this button a bunch of times, and what we're noticing is that the speed seems to converge towards some value, around 0.3176, which is definitely less than 0.3323. However, that isn't enough to prove that the speed actually converges towards that value, so we have to take a deeper look into the math. What I'm doing now is define a new sequence u, where un represents the player's speed after n jumps. In this definition, the function f applies a sprint jump to the input, much like the button we had on the spreadsheet. The precise definition of f is given by this formula, but for our purposes, we can simply approximate the coefficients up to 6 decimals. Here is the graph of f, shown in red. We can use this graph to visualize the growth of a sequence. First, we start with u0 equals 0. Then, we look at the value of f0 on the graph. Now we have u1. We can use the diagonal to start over and calculate f of u1 to get u2 can repeat this process to get you free, and so on. Now you'll see that the sequence approaches the intersection of the blue and red lines. This point is called the equilibrium, and corresponds to the limit of the sequence. You cannot get over that point. The equilibrium is given by a simple equation, where we have to solve x equal to f of x. Using the expression of f, we can start solving for x, and we find the solution to be about 0.3176, just like we found on the spreadsheet. Therefore, we have confirmed that the player's speed maxes out at 0.3176 on flat ground, which is less than enough to jump 4.4 meters. This definitely concludes that a 5 block jump on flat ground is impossible. But what about elevation momentum? On this setup, the jump cycle is only 8 ticks, so we should be able to gain more speed because a player can sprint jump more frequently. In this case, would we be able to make a 5 block jump? Again, we can use the spreadsheet. This time, I changed the button to apply 8 ticks of movement instead of 12. Let's see how much more speed we can get compared to flat momentum. 
Turns out, we can get a speed of around 0.3359, which is more than 0.3323. Therefore, it is possible to jump 5 blocks. In fact, we don't even need 45 strafe to do a 5 block jump with elevation momentum, as shown here in Uber's 5 block jump video. Previously, we've already excluded flat momentum, and elevation momentum gives just enough speed to do a 5 block jump, so these won't be enough to do a 6 block jump. Instead, we would have to consider a much more effective approach. This setup, called trapdoor headheader momentum, has a cycle of only 2 ticks. In fact, this is the most optimal momentum because the player cannot physically jump more than once every two ticks. Using the same approach as before, we can define a function g, which takes the player's speed as input and applies a two tick spring jump to it. As explained before, finding the maximum speed is simply a matter of solving the equilibrium equation x equal g of x. We use the same steps to solve this equation and find the solution to be about 0.407. Is that enough to do a 6 block jump? As it turns out, not quite. The furthest you can jump is 5.395 blocks, which is not even close to 6 blocks. In conclusion, the so-called unsolved mystery of Minecraft's longest jump is neither unsolved nor was it ever a mystery. With a bit of math and method, as well as knowledge of the game's physics, it really isn't that hard of a problem, and the definitive answer to that problem is that a 6 block jump is actually impossible. The longest jump possible is 5.375 blocks, shown in this clip. Well, that's about it for this video. I kind of skipped over some technicalities, but nothing too important. If you want to learn more, I'll put some info in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching.